Hello, happy Valentine's Day and welcome once again to worship with us here at Hull Citadel Salvation Army Community Church. We're going to begin our time together today by singing uh, song number eight. If you're using a songbook, come, let us all unite to sing, God is love. <laughs> So we're going to spend some time in prayer in just a moment or two. And again, this is a week when I'm sure there are many people and many situations we would like to be praying for, people who we want to see come to better health or to a saving knowledge of Jesus or for whom we have all kinds of concerns. But it's also a time for us to come and worship God. And as we spend some time in prayer, we're going to, to have another song, 369, if you're using a song. And it says, I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice. It's just a reminder that whilst we're coming to ask God for things, we're also coming to remind God, to tell God that we love him as well.
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, today we do want to declare that before we, we love even anybody else, that we love you. Because you have first loved us and you've shown us what love is. But today, Lord, we want, also want to remember those who we love, some of whom we've lost and some of whom we have concerns for and cares for, for health, for their financial situations, for their mental health, for all kinds of things that people are going through. Lord, those people who we've been thinking of, who are on our hearts and for whom we are concerned, Lord, we lift them up to you today. Let them be assured of your love and your care and your grace and your mercy. And as we continue to worship you just now, we pray that it will be centred on our love for you, but even more so on your love for us. We pray all that in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So as I introduced last week, this is uh, in February. Is that a... I'm going to start the after prayer bit again. So as I mentioned last week, uh, we've come into February, which for Salvationists is a particular uh, time to think about our giving and our work in other parts of the world and a time when we give to our work in overseas. In three weeks' time, we'll be having our virtual self-denial altar service. And self-denial is a time when we choose to deny ourselves of something in order to use that money to give to our brothers and sisters in Christ in other parts of the world. Now, each year we have a number of videos that show us something of where this will help, this, where this will go to help others. And so this year it's been mostly looking back at recent years and places that uh, the Salvation Army has been at work where we've looked at and to see what's happening for them. Hello and welcome to the second of our films for this year's Self-Denial Appeal. This year, we're revisiting some of the people and places we've featured before. In a moment, I'm going to be talking to Nana Togo. Nana presented last year's films from Burkina Faso. She and her husband Andre started the Salvation Army's work there in 2016. They began as just eight Salvationists, but when we visited, there were 182 senior soldiers and 36 junior soldiers from two corps and two outposts. While we were there, we saw 20 senior soldiers and nine junior soldiers being enrolled. We saw how the Salvation Army has been helping people who were struggling. Women from the local community have learned to read and write and to sew and to dye cloth. Micro-enterprise projects mean these women now are earning enough money to send their children to school. And outreach projects mean some of the local men have started to come along on a Sunday. So I'm going to get in touch with Nana and find out how she and Andre are getting on. Hi, Captain Nana Togo. Nice to meet you. Ça va? Oui, ça va. <laughs> really good to speak to you. Um, I know your husband, Captain Andre Togo, really well. Um, I've been working yeah. with him for over a year, but I've never met you, so this is a real pleasure. How are you? How has life been? How was 2020? We are doing well. I'm doing well with my husband and uh, our two kids. Life in uh, 2020 has not been easy. It has been very challenging. But still, we thank God for his grace, which has been sufficient through this uh, difficult time. Can I call you Nana or Captain Nana? Please go ahead. Nana, I understand you. You and, and, and Andre, you have a new appointment. Have you moved from Burkina Faso now? Yeah, we are in Mali. We are the currently regional secretaries. 
I'm the regional secretary for women ministry and Andre the regional secretary. But both we have got an additional appointment co-officers of uh, ACID Miller. How has the pandemic uh, affected the Ministry of the Salvation Army in the region? Because we, when we read the statistics for Burkina Faso and Mali, the, the, the death count is relatively low, but the economic impact seem to be, seems, from what you're saying, is quite large. Is that correct? It is correct. You know, the situation, usually it is not easy in Africa, particularly in Burkina Faso, where we have been seeing extreme poverty. Mm. And when the, this pandemic of COVID-19 came, the situation became worse as well in Mali. You know, people don't have access to uh, this elementary needs, and it is very difficult. Churches as well have been affected, even schools in all areas. Everybody is affected by this pandemic. The community project we have been uh, working with uh, in Burkina Faso, there were so many with ladies. Most of them, sorry, have been stopped also because of this pandemic issue like juice production, soap making. But uh, we also thank God through the Salvation Army always, we manage to still meet some needs of the people and we thank God for that. One of the things we've been able to partner with the Mali region on this year is to fund um, uh, with you a project vehicle. Can you tell us the impact the project vehicle has had? We have got so many remote areas in Mali that it wasn't easy at all. Mm. But now we are really relieved from that burden of not being able to, to, to visit our communities. At any time, the vehicle is moving, even from Mali to Burkina Faso, doing the community work. We are really grateful for that. And, um, and what about uh, you, Nana? What have you been learning from 2020 in your own life? People always thought that, you know, to show love to each other, we just have to be together, sit together, fellowship together. And through this coronavirus, I have learned that it is not necessary, it is not an obligation to be physically present, you know, to demonstrate your love. Even though we can be uh, absent physically, but in mind through practical actions still, we keep that bound, you know, of humanity we share together. Thanks for your inspiration to us in the United Kingdom and Republic of Ireland, and um, God bless you. Okay, thank you very much to you too, Benjamin, and uh, be assured of our prayer support. We are praying for you day and night, you are in our mind and uh, thought in our heart. May the Lord keep on visiting you individually and as a territory as well. Thanks so much. Bye, Nana. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> in next week's film, I'll be talking to Richard Bradbury, who's serving in Bangladesh. So now we're going to have our Bible reading for today, which today is taken from John chapter 15 and verses 1 to 17. So that's John chapter 15 and verses 1 to 17. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, 
ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. So as well as being Valentine's Day today, today's also a day when we're asked to mark Racial Justice Sunday. This is a day to look at how we can make the world, and particularly our church experience, accessible to people from all races, colours and ethnicities. And as such, we're going to have another video message just now about some of the work that is going on within the Salvation Army, particularly within the UK. Hello, I'm Colonel Janine Main and I'm the Territorial Secretary for Leader Development and I work at Territorial Headquarters. Sunday the 14th of February is Racial Justice Sunday in the churches in Britain and Ireland. Last year, following the murder of George Floyd and the resurgence of Black Lives Matter, our Territorial Commander, Commissioner Anthony Cotterell, issued a statement that included the words that you can read on your screen. Our hearts are heavy and hurting because racism infects the church. And we acknowledge and confess that this is true even in parts of Salvation Army life. Which led him to ask the Territorial Advisory Council to undertake some research into racial justice in the Salvation Army. Following that detailed research, a race inclusion working group has been created, which I am co-chairing with Captain Althea Borden, who is the core officer at Doncaster. The Race Inclusion Working Group is tasked with finding a way to implement the recommendations that the Territorial Advisory Council have presented. They want us to look at things like what we can do towards restoration and reconciliation and reparation. What we can do with regards to edu educating our people and increasing their understanding of racial justice. Or ways our organisation will have to change to be more inclusive what practical things we will have to do to make these changes. And then there's the impact of racial inclusion on the leadership of the Salvation Army and how to hold it accountable. And we need to create a space for continued conversation. Now, the Race Inclusion Working Group has only met twice. And with me, I have two members of the group. I have Tony Daniels and Tappy Bazuri. Tony is the Director of Community Services and works at Territorial Headquarters. And he's a member of the Christchurch Evangelical Anglican Church in Bedford. So, Tony, thanks for being with us. I, I would be great if you could just tell us what you bring to this group and what your hopes are for us as we work together. Thank you for that. Um, I believe that I bring a passion and, and commitment and, and a self-determination to support and champion the change process within the Salvation Army that's currently seeking to tackle and address the historic and present day racism that besets not just the army, but the wider church and society as a whole. And I think my, my deepest hope is that the Racial Inclusion Working Group will be that long awaited catalyst, if you will, for both change and reconciliation and addressing the balance within the Salvation Army's culture and DNA, which is for the betterment and advancement of the whole inclusion and diversity agenda. Thanks, Tony. That's, that's great. Thank you for contributing for being part of this 
a little video today and, and I'm really grateful that you're part of this group. We're also pleased to have a younger voice from Taffy. And so Taffy, what, what are your hopes for this group? Hi, hi Janine. Um, my name is Taffy Mizuri and I soldier at uh, Old Big Hall. I hope to bring new and creative ways to embrace and include uh, different nationalities within the Salvation Army. And having been raised in the Salvation Army as part of a minority, I hope to shed some light on how inclusive it has been for some of the soldiers I engage with. I also hope that this group will enable people to start the dialogue regarding these topics and make Salvation Army a more inclusive and diverse place to worship and work in. Thank you, Taffy. Thanks for your contribution. It's great to have you with us. Great for a younger voice to be on our group. There are other about 13 members of this group and, and we just hope that we're going to be able to work towards uh, confronting and fighting racism wherever it's found. Now, as I've mentioned already, today is, of course, Valentine's Day. It's a day for love. It's a day for romance. But what if love isn't just about romance? What if love is actually something much harder than that? Something much more difficult? Or maybe even what if love is something actually much better than just mere romance? So I will talk about love today, but with a realistic outlook about what that really means. And that won't mean that romance is dead and it won't mean that it isn't love as you know it, but I think it will be better than love as maybe as we often think about it. So I'm going to suggest that we do away with the false fluffy clothes and rainbow ideas about what love is. I don't want to be cynical or negative about it though, because the truth about love is much harder than you'll find in a Hallmark card or in a soppy film. The truth about love is also so much better than in sickly romantic ideals. Now the first half of this reading about Jesus as the vine says a lot about remaining remaining in him and this applies just as much when it comes to love as Jesus said as the father has loved me so I have loved you now remain in my love if you keep my commands you will remain in my love real love is not about just all the good stuff the happy times and the warm fuzzy feelings love sticks around it hangs on sometimes through the harshest of storms. But even then, that's only part of the story. The best example, even the truest form, and I would argue the only real source of love, is found in Jesus. You really want to love? Well, remain. Not just remain in a commitment of love, but remain in the source of all love. Remain in Jesus. Then we'll really keep tapped in to what love is all about. Now a reasonable question to ask then is what should love actually look like? If it isn't about the warm fuzzy feelings or receiving the pleasure of another's company, then what is it all about? Well Jesus said my command is this, Love each other as I have loved you. You want to see what a life of love looks like? Look at Jesus. If you want to know what the loving thing to do would be, look at Jesus. If you want to know if it's possible to love when all you feel is hurt, look at Jesus. This is a love that doesn't seek its own ends. It's a love that looks out for the best in others. It's a love that is inclusive of all, regardless of how deserving you might think they are. Now, if you know how Jesus loves you, bad as you are, or indifferent as you are, and 
and failing as we often are, then use that as your guide for loving others. But this also comes with a warning because this kind of love, this true kind of love, comes at a cost. Now, if there is one point, one major aspect of love to take away today, it is this. Love is much more about what you give than what you receive. That means that love will always incur a cost. Or maybe just at least a risk of significant cost. Now I'm going to say there is a cost worth paying because love is a love worth loving. And once again we see it's not just in the words of Jesus but in his actions too. And he predicts this in this passage of scripture. When he says greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for one's friends. This coming Wednesday the church as a whole begins a time that we call Lent a time of reflection. For many, it's a time of giving things up or maybe for taking things up, all based on Christ's sacrificial and selfless love. This was a love that had a cost, maybe even the ultimate cost. And I hope that you'll agree that this was a, a cost that was worthwhile because it's a cost that saved us. Jesus saw us and decided that we were worth the cost. Now you may be wondering by now if you could ever really manage such a high standard of love. And that's a reasonable question. But with love comes forgiveness and a will not to give up. To keep on trying. Because none of us will do it perfectly and nobody else will do it perfectly for us. But not only that, it's not just about what you do to love. It's about what we do. A reminder that Jesus said, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Jesus repeated himself again later on to make sure that we understand the point. This is my command, love each other. Now other translations use the phrase one another. Love one another. In either case, it makes it clear that we cannot and we should not try to keep it all up purely as a personal effort. I've got to keep on loving people regardless. I've got to keep on doing this. I've got to keep on doing that. We can and we should work on loving one another with one another. That's the whole point of that phrase. That means that we tolerate each other's differences, their quirks, Let's face it, the plain, old, annoying habits. Because I'm sure I'm not the only one who has annoying habits. And when I see them in other people, I kind of figure, well, I can't be any more annoying than I am. That means that we pick up the slack when others are struggling. It means that none of us are too different to be excluded from this either. So this Valentine's Day, let's choose to love. And that's going to begin by remaining in the source of all love in Jesus. To acknowledge by our decisions that Jesus shows us how to love, so then we love like he did. And it does mean that there will be a cost. But we are worth it. And so is anybody else we are called to love. Love is worth it. But most of all, let's determine to do this together. To love one another to love like Jesus loved I'm going to have a song that reminds us of that and as we remember Jesus love for us and think about how we can share that love and express that love in our own lives if you're using your Salvation Army songbook it's 169 here is love vast as the ocean
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we can only thank you for the way in which you have shown us sacrificial love in the ways in which you have done everything to love us and to care for us and to bring us together in your love. Help us be worthy of that. Help us make those tough decisions to handle those difficult relationships and to keep loving as you have loved. Pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen. So now in closing, let's have one last song together. In the Salvation Army songbook, it would be 262. Love divine, all loves excelling. It's a celebration of God's love in Jesus. And it's also a determination for us to live it out as well. So before we go, I pray today that God will bless you with an amazing amount of love, that you will know the great depth of love that he has for you and that you will be able to share that with other people, that people will know that they are loved, not just by you, but by God himself, a love that was willing to do everything to make that a reality. And I pray that in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen.